Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to a new Frame Quilting Friday. This is a little series just on getting on the machine every Friday so I can learn something new, challenge myself to keep experimenting with my long arm machine, and share the process of learning how to use it and gain control over my quilting stitches. So last week I shared some free motion couching along with some ruler foot quilting and I'll be honest I didn't get enough couching in and so this week I want to share more about couching and stitching out two different designs some pebbling and stippling and give you some tips on incorporating couching which is stitching through thick chunky yarn using a special foot on the Grace Cunique. So let's get started and learn how to do this together. So I'm doing some free motion couching today. As you can see, I've got my chunky yarn here. It's running through the smallest base uh, foot for the couching foot set. And I'm just stitching around. Now, the thing that I've noticed I have to be really careful about is certain angles, you know, just don't seem to tend to catch as well as others. So whenever I catch that, uh, whenever I see that happen, I just try and stitch back over in a different direction just to be sure that that yarn is 100% secured down. And then I also have to remind myself to slow down a good bit so that way I'm sure I'm stitching through that yarn every time. And it looks like it's that angle coming in from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock that it just doesn't seem to tend to be catching very well. So I'm gonna take my yarn out of the guide and see if this improves that. I'm just gonna swing around one more time. This quilt is a 100% experiment, so I feel like I'm able to get away with doing lots of travel stitching, stitching all over the place, making a mess of it, and that's okay. I think it's good to have projects like this where you're giving yourself permission to just play and have a ball and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, any time that you run low on your yarn, maybe it starts to pull straight from the ball, you wanna go on ahead and unspool it a bit with your hands because that is definitely something, if this yarn pulls, you can see how it gets thinner. Well, the thinner it is, the harder it is for your needle to stitch through it. As far as the needle that I'm using, I'm using a size 16 needle and this is it pretty much feels like, you know, worsted weight, you know, kind of standard weight yarn. It doesn't feel too thin. It doesn't feel too bulky and thick. And we do have different bases of feet that have bigger holes. So if you want to do chunkier yarns, I would say chunkier yarns are going to be better than your thinner yarns. Chunkier the better, definitely. Okay, now I'm swinging around one more time. As you can see, pebbling, this ends up looking like jelly beans. I think it looks really neat. I just love this effect and I like this with the variegated yarn. I'm not a huge fan of variegated thread in general, but I really like this. I think it's very cheerful, it has a really nice look to the quilt. Now I missed a little spot here, so I'm gonna sneak back, travel stitch over it. What I think I like about this the most is my quilting is oftentimes the, the thing that, you know, kind of recedes back into the background. You know, it's on the surface of the quilt, but you don't often see it really in a bold way. Well, this is basically turning that on its head. The quilting design is creating all this wonderful texture and it's just luscious. It's just great. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into a design called stippling. Stippling is a great design to do with free motion couching but I wanna take it slow because there's a lot of different direction changes and angles here. And if the yarn isn't positioned properly, then my needle won't go through it. So you can see just how slowly I'm taking this. I'm quilting on roughly a half of an inch scale. That means there's about a half of an inch or so, maybe a little bit more some places, maybe a little bit less in others, but generally it's on about a half of an inch scale. And I, how I gauge that is I just kind of aim to have my, my thumb or my index finger be able to fit between those lines. Always be on the lookout for if your yarn doesn't look like it has a stitch running through it. And if that happens, don't panic. Uh, with stippling, it's kind of hard to travel back because the design doesn't involve any travel stitching. What I advise you to do whenever you're playing with this is to go on ahead and stitch 
in this style. This is, I call this collage quilting style. And what this allows you to do is just any time that you need to, you can change designs. So if I need to go back over that area and stitch over it again, I can just go right back into that pebbling design. And that's allowed because I'm just stitching a variety of designs here. I don't have to just stay with stippling. I can do just a little pocket of pebbling right here. I actually call this design frog eggs. Whenever I do a little cluster of pebbles and then I go back into stippling, that's frog eggs. So we can just say, okay, well that was just a little patch of frog eggs. And then here I'm gonna go back to stippling. Just slow and steady. Anytime that I think that I might be stitching in an angle that I might not stitch through it, then through the yarn, then I just slow down. And I think that's really the biggest key, and it's the thing that I try and focus on the most is just keeping a nice, slow, consistent speed. Maybe we'll go back into some more pebbles just to keep that looking right with the rest of the design. And what's nice is that, you know, my pebbles don't have to be perfect, but working with these this big chunky yarn, it's kind of like you're getting away with it <laughs> and it still looks good. That's what I like about it the most. Whoop, I got a little bit of a knot here, so I'm gonna turn off my machine, click it off, and then just try and arrange the yarn here so it's flat and it's not gonna twist. Can I maybe go on a back and forth motion like this? I think that works out well. And the other experiment, I have to say, I actually don't know how this is going to wear. You might be wondering, okay, how, how is this going to go after you wash it a hundred times? You know, what if you do this for a kid quilt, a baby quilt, is it going to wear well? And the truth is, I have no idea. I think that's going to really depend on the yarn that you use. You know, some yarns are more delicate than others. I honestly don't remember what this yarn is made out of. I'm sorry, I don't remember the weight. Uh, it feels like there is a little bit of wool mixed in there, definitely. So it's going to be a question mark as to uh, how it's going to wear long term. And this is going to be, whoop, you see, I just ran out of bobbin thread. This is actually good because either that or th something broke. I'm not really sure which one, but this is good because I wanted to show you how to deal with stops and starts. Uh, so getting back to it, I actually don't know how this is going to wear, not 100%. But I think this is a great quilt to really ask that question and figure that out because it's a tablecloth quilt. I'm going to wash it, you know, at least once a week and I'll be able to know pretty quickly if this is going to be a technique that I can do on a quilt that's going to be washed a lot and used and, you know, basically hard worn. Okay, so here's how I'm going to deal with this thread break. I've basically got three threads here. I've got the yarn. And then I've got my top thread and my bobbin thread. And I did not change any of the settings on my machine whenever I started doing the free motion couching. Uh, I left my machine at the same, same stitch length, which is set to 16 stitches per inch. I did not change my tension. I did not adjust anything. I just simply added the yarn going through the center of the foot, and that is it. And again, I'm using a size 16 needle, and you can see just how nice and chunky this yarn is. I think that's really the key. If you try using yarn that's too thin, it's really gonna give you headaches because it's just not gonna catch, uh, and it's not going to, you know, it's gonna continually be something you have to stitch back over it again. Uh, so if you find yourself running into that problem, just pick a thicker yarn. Okay, this looks good. You can see here the yarn's pulled away a little bit. What I'll do is probably get started again in that spot, but I like this. I have enough thread tails here. I'm gonna tie that in a knot, just like so. And bring that knot down so it's about an eighth of an inch from the quilt surface. I like the front of the machine nice and open so that way I can stick my hand underneath it. My hand's underneath the quilt right now and I can feel that cheater needle pop through and I'm making sure, the reason my finger's on the other side of the quilt is that I'm making sure that the cheater needle's not going all the way through the back. It's just running through the batting area, just through the middle. Okay, now the reason I use a cheater needle is because it's got an eye that's open. I can just pop those thread tails in, but you wanna give it a little tug to have a little bit of slack on these threads. So that way when you pull it through, it doesn't pull through too tight and then pull back through that eye. So it's kind of a double-edged sword having it be so easy to thread. There we go. So I know I 
give it a little gentle tug and that pulls right through. Every once in a while, one of my threads just decides to give me a little bit of a problem, not a big deal. Pull it out and slide it through. It's really important to have those thread tails tied in a knot that keeps them locked together, uh, but you don't wanna take it down too close to the quilt, otherwise they will stay on, the, that knot will stay on the surface of the quilt. There we go. Now I'm not sure whether I ran out of bobbin thread or I broke thread, so let's take a look. Whoop. Look at that, ran out of bobbin thread. I'll wind this back up again and then we'll get started. So I've reset my bobbin and what I've done is I did not break the yarn. The yarn is still connected here. So I'm gonna pull the machine back to right over that spot and I'm gonna drop my needle down, bring it back up again. That's gonna bring that bobbin thread to the surface. Now this is something I've done. I've taken just a little pen here and bent it in the shape of a hook to create a nice bent needle and that's been really helpful for doing this kind of work and I've noticed that every once in a while I just need to get in real tight to that needle area and sometimes it's hard with this wire guide in the way so that's why I've been doing and using that little extra pen that I've made. All right so now I'm going to go up and down just a few times and that's locking my thread in place. Okay, and now I have two separate things here. I've got my thread tails and I've got my yarn. I want my yarn to be kind of free floating and able to do its thing. I want these thread tails really to be back underneath the foot. Uh, but I think for temporarily, I'm gonna just keep them here on the surface and maybe hang on to them a little bit. And let's just stitch that circle, get a little bit of distance, pull those thread tails out. I think that's the best way to manage that. If you're um, you run out of yarn, it's gonna be a different situation. If you wanna break your yarn and start somewhere else, that's gonna be a different situation. But this is how I deal with it if it's a thread break, not a yarn break. Okay, so now I'm working my way back around. And let's go back to stippling. Finish this off with just a little bit of wiggling. And let's see how tight we can get it. I think there is gonna be a limitation just with how chunky the yarn is. You know, you can only make that so small and have it still look good. I honestly think that this is gonna look best on a larger scale with about a half of an inch between those lines of quilting. This just ended up looking a little tight and you can see I started missing a few places here and there. So I really think this technique is gonna be best suited for half inch scale quilting or bigger. I mean, you could go on up to an inch between these lines and that would still look great. Still feel like you can do travel stitching. You can use the edges of your quilting space, you know, other designs like pebbling to travel stitch along and that's a-okay. So there we go. That is how to do some more free motion couching. I am having a blast <laughs> stitching on this quilt with this technique. Uh, now I'm sure you're wondering how to deal with it or how to actually just get started so here I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna break thread and yarn completely. And what's nice is if you pull out all the way to the batting area, you can just cut this completely clean off. And we're gonna stitch through one of the diamonds with some more couching. So let's drag the machine over and I'll show you how to get started. So here we go. Here's my yarn, there's my top thread. And this is exactly how I got started stitching from the very beginning. I'm going to drop my needle down where I want to get started, bring it back up again. That's going to bring my bobbin thread up to the surface. Go back to that spot. Well, let's see here, get on track here, Leah. Yeah, there we go. Kind of, I like to keep the two things in two different angles so that way I can really hang onto that bobbin thread and do a few stitches in place. It's not going to build up too much and that's gonna make sure that the yarns aren't going to get sucked in the machine, nothing's gonna happen, it's gonna secure that yarn down. Uh, it's also gonna lock that yarn in place too. Okay, so now we're just gonna click it on and get going. I'm just gonna go back and forth wiggly U shapes, just like so. Now what do we do with that start? Well, I would tie off and bury these thread tails just the exact same way as before but I'm going to clip that yarn off right at the beginning. So that's how I deal with that. Again, it's an experiment. This quilt's gonna get washed a lot. I will definitely let you know how that wears. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about free motion couching and how it works to be putting yarn on the machine in addition to your normal thread. And I should specify, I have set up the machine exactly the way I normally set it up for regular long arm quilting. I have isocord polyester embroidery thread in the top and bobbin of the machine. It's a 40 weight thread. It's my favorite thread for machine quilting, whether I'm on the long arm or on my home sewing machine. I have my tension set up as normal. I did not adjust my tension whenever I incorporated the yarn. Uh, and then I set my stitch length to 16 stitches per inch. Uh, and then the only other change is I've put the base, I've clicked on the little um, uh, base for couching and I am using the one with the smallest hole in it. And this is one of the feet from the nine piece foot set that Grace Company has uh, released for this machine. You can find it at leahday.com slash grace feet. That's where you can find it. It's an excellent foot set. It has all these little bases. Let me grab it. It has all these little bases that you can attach to the foot and you just click them in. Uh, so you've got little echo feet, uh, the little bases that can do really cool echoing and make that echoing a little bit easier. You can also use all of these bases with rulers. So that's really cool too. Uh, you've got some angle guides. I can't wait to play with that one. I think that's gonna be really neat for doing some straight line quilting and different effects. Uh, and then there are three different couching foot bases. They're the ones that have this little wire attached to it to help guide the yarn uh, and then different sized holes in the center to guide the yarn. And so really you wanna aim for chunkier yarn because that's gonna be easier to stitch through, uh, but the foot set really makes this easy and makes it so much faster and there's so many different things that you can do with it. So I hope you'll come and check out the foot set. As for the machine that I'm using, this is the Grace Cunique 14 Plus. It was recently renamed the 15R and I'm quilting on the Continuum Quilting Frame, which I love because this frame can grow with me. If I decide to get a bigger long arm, and then I can always expand the frame out this way so it become become wider. And if I get a bigger space, I can also add a two foot extension to go from eight feet where I've got it set up now to 10 feet. So I hope that you'll come and check out the machine, check out the foot set. You can learn more about the Grace Cunique 15R slash 14 plus at leahday.com slash 15R. Until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>